In this episode, we are going to be looking at Wales versus France. The teams are out and we're going to be discussing all the selection decisions and who we think will win and why. Hello, amateurs. Welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got everyone's favourite pundit, Elko, with me again today. There he is. Hi, Elko. Hello, TC. Great to be here again. Uh, Looking forward to talking about the France-Wales game. 100%. Uh, and before we get it, I mean, we're going to go through all the selections in depth and there's a lot to talk about, actually, with the selections. But just overall, what kind of feel are you getting for this game? What kind? Of, how do you think it might go generally? Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> France are big uh, and I can only think uh, Wales will, will probably try and keep this fairly open and, and ball in pay time will be be high from them so that that leads me to believe a, a really good game is 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 coming up um but curious uh in some missing people with wales and how that might affect them yeah i mean out of all the three games this weekend i think the sort of breadth of how this game could go is wider than either of the other two there's so many different potential scenarios of what might happen uh and we've got france up there already that's a mistake so we'll skip back there oh there we go we'll start with wales <laughs> so this is the Wales forwards to, to start against France. Uh, the key notable thing here is that Wales have beefed up their pack by bringing in Ryan Elias, who's a bigger hooker. And then the big change are really is Will Rowlands coming into the second row, Daft Jenkins moving to blindside and Alex Mann onto the bench. This screams of we're going to try and match fire with fire <laughs> beef and, and hold on for as long as we can. What? How do you see it? Yeah, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they have moved moved the captain out to to blindside. Um, don't think he's played much there for, for Exeter. I, I know I know he can play there, and he he'll be he'll be good and and um, and do a good job for Wales. Yeah, and they they seem to have tried to to go for that. Uh, I'm. It's one of those with the French guys are just so big. I, I don't know how you can. It, it's a tough one. I can see why that why they've done it, and they'll they'll give their all. I, the, the scrums are going to be absolutely huge uh, in all ways, and uh, Wales, Wales, of course, uh, um, we 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 know how important set piece is, but they'll really need to 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 hammer this down and 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 keep ball because I think if they don't have any of their own ball, um, it could be a very long day in Cardiff. Yeah, it could. Just one other sort of technical thing that Wales might want to try and do, and that's to get the French forwards off their feet as often as possible. Just getting them on the ground and making them get back up and work again could be a real key fatigue thing in this game. So look out for that around the rucks if Wales are, are you know, deliberately trying to get the French off their feet. Uh, on to the backs and, wow, no, literally nobody saw this coming. Uh, the back line is the same, apart from the centres who have been dropped all the way out of the twenty three. Two of Wales' most experienced players in Nick Tompkins and George North are replaced by Owen Watkin and Joe Roberts. Elko, what are your thoughts? <laughs> oh, I, I, what's happened? I, I have, is there a backstory to this? Is there a, a golf buggy or something? Um, has something been said, out, you know, in terms of, I mean, we know Gatland is, a, is you know, his way of the highway sort of thing. It, it seems weird that they've they've got rid of two guys that are probably the most experienced there certainly north and you know to be fair haven't played badly i don't think and, and we're starting to get a good a good partnership I mean, we spoke in earlier pods this week about you know units and and getting players to have consistency playing together it just feels like wow um they're, they're getting this out now i did hear someone say that um they've got one eye on on a game that they will have to win <laughs> Last last game uh, next week, uh, which could be a decider for something, um, and and maybe Gatlin's sort of you know uh, gambling and taking a risk now, knowing full well he's going to change it up again next week to bring in fresh legs. And but it, it does seem a very strange selection to to drop them completely out of it. Um, and if there is something going on, um, it's interesting because the rest of the team, the rest of the back line looks looks you know as we've seen before, and that, and that's consistent. Um, keeping faith with Wimes, who who we're both a big fan of, uh, and the two wingers there. So yeah, it's it's a it's a strange one to me. Maybe they felt because of what's gone on with with, with France's selection at centre in enforced because because of suspension that it was a time that they could take a risk with with their 
12 and 13 as well but it it, it does make your mind think is there, is there something going on there yeah it's either that isn't it or it's a kind of a long-term decision like in my opinion like the noises coming out of the Welsh camp there's been nothing untoward I don't think this week in terms of I don't know discipline or anything like that it does purely just sound like a, a selection decision we don't know the criteria on that though well if they got to- dropped TT, if they got dropped for leaking something, you can be damn sure and no, no one was leaking anything this week. So, who knows? <laughs> um, onto the bench. And it looks exactly as we expected here, really. The players that didn't make the starting lineup, aside from the centres that we've already mentioned, go in to replace the guys on the bench. And it looks like a, a strong bench. They did well off the bench uh, against Ireland. So, I expect them to do the same this week. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it looks as we, we expected. Um, Booker's an interesting change-up as well, and we'll see how that goes line-out time with the big forwards of, of France. But this looks, uh, you know, uh, what we've seen before. Um, I think, for me, Wales will be probably the fitter team. Um, and as I said, uh, that they'll want to keep uh, the French forwards running around. And, and, and as you alluded to there, they'll, they'll want, want them getting up and down off the ground. So they're really burning up uh, energy levels. And these guys coming off the, the bench will, will, will hopefully help Wales in the, the last uh, 10, 20 minutes where I expect um, the French to be pretty tired. Yeah. And, and just talking about the forwards there in particular, I think the vast majority of them will bring a lot of energy from the bench. Uh, Dylan Lewis with... Uh, an extra game in his in his legs after the previous timeout should hopefully be able to do that as well. Okay, let's move on to the French because um, yeah, there's plenty to talk about here. That is for sure. After talking about maybe Malvaca stepping aside for March on every single game so far this championship, he's eventually done it. So March on comes in to start, and then in the second row, both of them changed. So out go Cameron Wocky out of the squad altogether. Out go Tuolagi out of the squad altogether. And in come Thibaut Flamont and uh, it's Manuel, isn't it? Emmanuel Miafu. And also back in, which was unexpected to me for sure, is Gregory Aldrich, who's recovered from that knock. Uh, he got to take his place at number eight. So four changes in the pack, Alco, but they are still enormous. Absolutely massive. <laughs> Both second row, six foot eight, um, and only uh, Murphy is only twenty three stones. So you know, Jesus Christ, it, absolutely mad. It's they're, they're so big. Can you, I mean, that, I mean, we know how big the front row is. And Martin, I think, is probably a better scrummager. Um, so clearly, they are going to try and overpower Wales and go at them uh, in set piece. Um, uh, put loads of pressure on that hooker who struggled before and, and go at them at scrum time and um, penalty kick to corner and more, 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 I would, I would think. Um, huge um, and, and a, a massive challenge um, for Wales. But as I said, you know, how fit are these guys? I don't know. Um, I think they might struggle um, to, to keep it going for, for um, however long they're, they're on for before the bench come on. And yeah, Aldry, I, I, I thought Aldry had like the way he went off and, before I thought he was it was a season ender, so um, obviously not as bad as they thought, um, and and great to see him him back uh, in that back row, which is which is a, a great back row to be fair, and that will be a you know um, going up against the Welsh back row who we know uh, have a huge work rate um, and and great to watch and, and great ball ball um, carriers as well. That's a really interesting um, sort of. Uh, thing to look at on on Sunday, um, who gets on top in in the back row? Because I think that will be crucial um, for what goes on outside. Yeah, and just talking about the second rows themselves, it must be said like Flamont was such an important player for France when he was playing and strong uh, in the previous two seasons. Like he's a huge player for France. How they've been, and Miafu <laughs> was lined up to be the replacement for Valencia essentially this championship, but then got injured. So I would say I would suggest. That even though this is their first two starts in this in this championship, this is probably France's number one second row pairing, um, and it'll be interesting, like you say, to see how long they last because I think they both played their first game back last week. So let's move on to the bench. Uh, sorry, the backs, and Le Garrick comes in for Luku. I thought the French might need a little bit of extra spark there, just something to get them moving forward, and Le Garrick certainly could could provide that. Ramos goes to 10 to replace uh, Jalibert, who's injured. The young Bordeaux buck 
Deporter comes in at 12 to replace Dante, uh, suspended. And Leo Barry, the staff front say, fullback comes in. I think this is his debut. So, what are you seeing, Elko? What do you make of this back division? Yeah, so I think um, Ramos coming in is, isn't a massive surprise. We know he, he can play there. There seems to be a lot more ability for French players to come in and and play um, play ten, be that a nine or, or fifteen in this case, and, and he'll do a good job. He's he's been doing that as club um, as well. Um, and yeah, like I think there's been a lot of uh, pressure on, on uh, for a change at nine, um, particularly you know in t- terms of um, the way they've been playing, the results they've been getting. Um, not where they want to be, and I, th- I think that was always going to happen. So it'll be interesting to see how this kid goes. He, he seems he seems decent enough. Um, and the twelve um, is I've seen some clips of him. He looks ridiculous. Um, he's he's a, he's a big kid. Um, he can he can sort of um, play the bash role or or the distributor role very very well. Um, scored a, a two worldies the other day. So he he looks he looks fantastic. Even though it's a, an enforced. Um, uh, change up because of uh disciplinary stuff you know um and yeah you know you, st- you still um look at look at Pano on the wing you know if they can get him some some ball we know what he can do and, and, and the same on the other side so Barry coming in is good as well I think um so it's, it's a very attacking um team I don't think they've lost much um if anything they're gaining here and they look they look very very strong to be fair yeah I haven't seen Barry play myself but uh, the, the rumours are that he's a really thrilling player. So, uh, again, this game could go in a whole load of different directions. Now, we talked about the uh, fitness of the French forwards, but I'm not sure if it's even going to be that much of a factor when you look at what they've got coming on off the bench. It's 6-2 split and, again, massive. And, you know, they're just replacing like for like, really, a lot of lot of the places here, along with Luku and Moafana, the experienced guys that, on the bench. Yeah, it's pretty scary, isn't it? It's it's the big big man again, and and um, you, 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 Wales, I think need to need to really take opportunities if they are if they come up um, early doors and, and try and get you know at least parity or, or maybe even a lead because you look at this and you think wow these guys coming on a lot of experience, um, a lot of a lot of power, um, even with Mofana there he, he can come in and do a job at, in certain positions um, if needs be, but huge forwards again, and it's. Um, you know, it, it, it's uh, again. I don't know. I don't know if the roof's closed or not. We haven't heard anything or what what the weather's going to be. Um, ideally, it's closed and and or dry, and um, Wales can run these boys around. But you you you'd, you'd fear for them a little bit. Yeah, do a little bit, but also I think they'll have great optimism. You know, I think they've shown that throughout the tournament so far, and I think with the consistency of selection that they've had, generally speaking, aside from a couple of obvious ones this week, I think they're growing together and I think they'll be stronger this week than they have been previously. Now, whether they can then transfer that into getting a lead and then hanging on to a lead uh, is the big question, and whether they can upset this French team, stop their momentum before they even get going, that's what needs to happen. Um, What kind of game do you reckon we'll see there, Welco? This is a big. That's a tough question, I think. But what, what do you think? What do you think we're going to see? Um, uh, well, it, it's hard to call because I think it depends on who gets uh, control uh, up front and has more ball. It, it will be a possession get, um, game, <laughs> but I think I think each team will use their possession in different ways. So if you're Wales and you have possession, you want to try and run these guys around and have big ball. In play time, um, probably not kick the ball out a lot, keep it in, um, and and therefore that's a way of, of sort of putting their game plan on it. Um, and then if you're if you're France, it's probably the opposite. You probably you probably want ball off and and really go from set piece and and um, strike plays um, and and really attack from line out. I think and ball um, probably probably look to put huge pressure on the scrum. So it's difficult to call. Um, I think either way it'll be quite fascinating as a purist. I think if you're a neutral, you probably want Wales to, to be dominant because that means that the game's going to be a, a lot more open. And again, of course, we come back to the to, to this thing that's raised its head again. What what France team is is going to turn up? And you know, in a way, I think it's really good that there's been some changes because this excuse about this hangover has got to has got to go. It's you know, if you're but if you're bringing in fresh guys that weren't involved. 
um, so much in, in in the World Cup, then you know that new freshness, the new kind of mentality of of guys trying to prove themselves and go well. Hopefully, that will bring huge energy to this, this French team, and you might you might see a French team that will will, will come and really turn up. Also, we know how good that back line could be. Um, so don't get me wrong. I don't think they're not going to give ball to the backs. They certainly will. They'll try and get the ball to Bono as, as much as possible. It's just how they do it will be will be interesting. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, France are... Uh, these are professional players and they're playing for their country. So, you know, I just find it unbelievable that they sort of turn up sometimes with a lack of energy or a lack of drive. Anyway, that's that's the way it looks you know, certainly in terms of body language and stuff like that. Uh, I think one of the key matchups here is going to be in the front row. I think the props, um, if France get a roll on in that scrum, I think it'll be very difficult for Wales to work their way back into the game after that. That matchup, along with, uh, obviously, um, the big uh, Welsh second row that they selected, whose name is escaping me at the moment, uh, Will Rowlands, um, is going to be, Key, I think, can they get parity in the scrum? Yeah, they've they've got to fight for everything. And, and, uh, you know, listen, we both know that it's not, not always about size. Certainly, that helps. And, and early doors weight does come into it, just just because of the you know the physics of it all. But as as players tire, technique and height come way back into it. And 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 Wales have always been good at that. And I, I think technically they'll they'll. Over you know after the first fifty, I suppose it depends how many scrums there are, of course. Um, but I think yeah, they, they've got to try and get parity and be very clever uh, in how they scrum um, and use you know really work the referee and and um, but if if France get real big dominance, which which we've seen them do before, then that that can be that can be a problem. Um, and you saw how Ireland um, had huge gains in that. Um, Porter was allowed to, to, to do what he does. Um, and um, that, that that starved um, Wales of, of any ball. Every time they got a turnover, then it was a penalty at scrum time. Um, or they were under pressure because of the angles that was going on. So they'll, they'll, they'll probably have learned from that. Um, and obviously, you know, Gatlin's a wily, wily guy and he's a, he's a fellow front row forward, so he'll know all about that. Um, they'll probably look to get the ball in and out, channel one and, and crack on. Yeah. And then when they do, another key factor, I think, and I've got no doubt this is going to happen, and that is for Costello to continue his run of just playing with confidence and playing with positivity, because with those that new centre pairing outside of him, he's going to have to drive that. And like I say, I've got no doubt that he will, because he just seems to be that sort of character. And if they can do that, and if he can get the accuracy, if they can get on the front foot, then the world opens up to them, I think. And they could very well go on and win. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's interesting because, you know, um, when a, he he may have... Look, he, he's going to have to stand up and he's going to have to to drive this. And, and when you've got a, a 12 as vocal and combative as Tompkins is, and we know that, um, and who he's used to playing outside of, of um, you know, that, that might have um, maybe stalled what Costello wants to do. And, and the same, you know, we've got someone very experienced uh, in North Hillside. So, so actually, he, he might he might feel empowered and that could be really, really good because it, we both know he's a great player. And I think, you know, 10s need to be able to feel that they can, that they're the bosses, they're the, they're the generals. And, and maybe that's what, what where the selection is has been pointed to. So, Let's see. We both rate him um, and, and see how he goes. And obviously, you've got Lloyd to come off the bench as well, which would, be, which would be interesting as well. Yeah, absolutely. OK, let's get down to the brass tacks, Alco. This is super tough to uh, predict, in my opinion. But what are you, where are you going with? Who do you think is going to win and by how much? It is a head and heart one. Um, Wales by three plus... Wells by three. Wow. Okay. I am going to go, I'm going to go the other way. I think, like I said at the start, I think this game can play out in a whole load of different ways. But one thing I definitely think we're going to see is a lot of scores. I'm going to go 21, 41 to France. I think it's going to be some wild tries in this game and and it's going to be an absolute spectacle. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I've got a feeling it will be a bit of a banger, um, and um, hopefully the whole weekend is. It's obviously the last game of the three, and um, yeah, I mean, in, in one way, the shackles should be off both teams as well, kind of. Um, you know, they're not really 
they're not playing for championship, right? Um, so so in theory they should be able to chuck the ball around with freedom. Um, let's 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 see how that goes. But uh, yeah, it, as long as it's a good game, we 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 don't care, right? Hundred percent. Okay, people at home, that is what we think. That's what we think. How we see this game going with some of the key parts of this. What do you think? Where are the key matchups? Where is this game going to be won and lost? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a conversation. I'm learning lots of stuff from people in the comments section. Some really valuable insight there. So thank you very much for that. Keep that up and give this video a thumbs up while you're down there, if you don't mind. And it just leaves me to say, Elko, thanks so much again for your time today. Pleasure, TT. Speak to you over the weekend. And for those at home, you can subscribe there. Elko, <laughs> you can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play. <laughs>